Good morning, church family. I greet you in the name of God, the Creator Jesus, and our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, for this time of worship. An important announcement for this week, the SPRC will be meeting on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Do not forget to bring your mask. Prayer request. Now we have come to a time of prayer request. In the bottom of your screen, there should be a bar across it. When you touch or click it, you should be allowed to type a message in it. We will allow a moment for people to type in their request, and we will read them aloud. Kevin Kuhn. We have on our list Sandy Newsom, Bill and Francis Clemens, Dick and Dee Billings, Natalie Brunin, Joshua Garrett, family of Don Jewell, Aubrey McHalco, Kevin Keene, Suzanne Kelly, Tricia Speakman, Glenda Lerber, Adele Trevenio, Mandy and Trevor Townsend, family of William Dalton, Michelle Gantz, Tani Elderman. Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, the giver of life, we pray for the church throughout the world. Sanctify its life, renew its worship, empower its witness, restore its unity. Remove from your people all pride and every prejudice that dulls their will for unity. Strengthen the work of all those who strive to seek that common obedience that will bind us together. Heal the divisions which separate your children from one another, that they may keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Our first hymn is found in our United Methodist Hymnal 545, the church's one foundation. We will have the lyrics up on our live stream, so please join us worshiping our God together.
I invite you to turn in your Bible or follow along with us in, on the screen as we read our scripture reading for the day found in the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Please hear the word of God. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up so that to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some, draw some out and take it to the, sh the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water, that it had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have come, become drunk. But you have kept the good wine for an, until now. Jesus did this. The first of his signs in Cana of Galilee were revealed in his, in his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers and disciples, and with his his brothers and his disciples, and they remained there for a few days. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. I'm not in church today. I am at my brother's wedding. Today's Bible verse was about a wedding that happened back in the day of Jesus. And during those times at weddings, everyone was excited and they had a huge feast and they had lots to eat and drink. And the main drink for most folks was wine. And then he told him, bring me out jugs and fill them with water. And the man said, fine, well, I will do it. And what happened next? But Jesus turned the water into wine. And not only was it wine, it was good wine. But why is this important? Why does this matter to us? There's a lot of reasons why, but one of the most important ones was this was a miracle. Miracles can happen all around us all the time, any day, and it's a wonderful thing. And Jesus started his trek to the cross with this first miracle. He had his disciples, he had his mother, and he showed everyone around him that he was the Son of God. So let's say our prayer for this week. Dear God and Jesus, please help us to see the everyday miracles around us and be grateful for Jesus and his first miracle. Amen. Good morning. Laura Brooke Bowles has been received by the council into the church. She is here to be joined with us in the service of Jesus Christ here at Warsaw United Methodist Church. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Everyone who acknowledges me before others I also will acknowledge before my Father, who is in heaven. Miss Laura Brooke Bowles, please answer these questions faithfully. Do you reaffirm that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Do you? I do. Do you trust in him? Do you? I do. Will you be a faithful disciple of this congregation? 
given of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? Will you? I will. This question is for the congregation of Warsaw United Methodist Church. Do you, the disciples of Warsaw United Methodist Church, promise to help Miss Laura Brooke Bold find her place in the body of Christ, to pray with and for her, and to welcome her fully in holy friendship? Do you? We do. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the life journey that brought Laura Brooke Bowles to join our church today. We celebrate the unique impact she'll make here and already has made here through her presence, gifts, and talents. May this congregation offer support in times of trouble and rejoice with her always. May our church strengthen her faith and deepen her discipleship. All this we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Laura Brooke Bowles, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ and a member of Warsaw United Methodist Church. Live in his love and serve your God faithfully. And to all the church family, please welcome Laura Brooke Bowles. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us in Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ and join to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. On behalf of the Council of Warsaw United Methodist Church, I present Charles Bowles V, the child of Brooke Bowles and Charles Bowles IV, for the sacrament of baptism. Ms. Brooke, Mr. Charles, in presenting Charles Phillips Bowles V, for baptism, you are announcing your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and declaring that you want Charlie to know and love and serve Christ. Do you reaffirm your own faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you? Do you claim God's promises on Charlie's behalf? And do you look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation as you do for your own? Do you? Do you promise to pray with and for him and to bring him up in the knowledge and the love of God? Do you? This question is addressed to the congregation of Warsaw United Methodist Church. Do you, the disciples of Warsaw United Methodist Church, promise to guide and nurture Charles Phillips Bowles V by word and deed? with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful disciple in Christ's church. Do you? We do. We do. Let us pray. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon this water. Let Charles Phillips Bowles V, who passed through these waters, be delivered from death to life, from bondage, to freedom, from sin, to righteousness. Bind him to the household of faith. Guard him from all evil. Strengthen him to serve you with joy until the day you make all things anew. Amen. Can I have... Mr. Charlie the Fifth. Charlie? Let's see. Oh. 
You're going to be okay. <laughs> Charlie? All right. And I'll be quick. Libby, what do you call him? Charlie? All right. Charlie? Charles Phillips Bowles the Fifth. The child of the covenant. Child of a God. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> She didn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. All right. <laughs> to the disciples of Warsaw United Methodist Church, please welcome our newest baptized member, Charles Philip Foles V, better known as Charlie. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, if y'all will join me in our second hymn this morning, it's found in the hymnal on page 175 if you have that at home. It's Jesus, the very thought of thee. Before I pray, I have to say this. Uh, this is my fourth Sunday here at Warsaw United Methodist Church, as you guys have been seeing. Uh, I've been trying to bring in more people and participate in the service. Today, I am grateful to Miss McKenzie for reading the scripture, and also uh, Mr. Chris Evans so that those of you who are at home can see and do worship with us. And Miss Nedra Blick, who's playing the piano beautifully, and uh, Mr. Bowles IV, and who's gonna uh, be helping us with offering. And also our council chair, Mr. Billy Herbert, for receiving new members. And Miss Sarah Schmidt, whom uh, those of us who are here in the sanctuary didn't get to see her wonderful message. But uh, she is out of town, but yet she was committed and dedicated to make YouTube video for our little ones. So I am grateful for Miss Sarah Schmidt. And also Miss Suzanne Schrader, our worship chair, worship committee chair, who is presiding our service. And even Libby, who told uh, the pastor uh, Charlie's name. Liturgy in Greek is a liturgia. It literally means work of a people. And we, all of us, 
here at Warsaw United Methodist Church. We'll do so for the work of a God, work of the kingdom of God together. So I am grateful for everyone who's participating and who's doing this service with us. Please join me in a prayer. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. O God, as your servant is about to deliver your word to your people, help your people hear your voices, your messages, instead of Terry's research nor his knowledge. Pray in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our today's scripture is a very well-known story, the wedding at Cana. So once again, it is a little bit difficult for a little preacher like me to share anything new. But I hope and pray that you hear the word of God instead of Terry's. The early church fathers consider this story, the wedding at Cana from the Gospel of John chapter 2, as the first miracle of Jesus Christ during his public ministry. Modern biblical scholars accurately pointed out that this story, the wedding at Cana, is only recorded in the Gospel of John. There are no other written records of this story anywhere else. Also, some of the ancient literature scholars rightly pointed out that the verse 11 states that this was Jesus' first sign, not miracle. Thus, some people focus on the existence of, quote-unquote, the book of signs from the Gospel of John. In this story, since you guys heard this story so many times, many phrases, words, themes that faithful pastors, preachers, teachers, people researched, studied throughout the centuries. Wedding, maybe heavenly banquet. The third day, maybe echoing resurrection. Jesus addressing his mother as a woman. Maybe no family ties in the ministry of the kingdom of God. Our, God's time, wine, maybe communion. Since there is no Lord's Supper narrative in the Gospel of John, maybe some people uh, see this narrative as a communion narrative. Or six jars, number six, may be incompletion, since it is not seven. Purification rites, maybe baptism. Servant, since the Greek word is diaknos, maybe deacons. 120 to 180 gallons of wine, abundance. Maybe abundant grace of God. Water into wine. Maybe a new creation. See, as I go through these themes, verses, or phrases, terms, you guys heard of it all. You guys heard of it all before. You guys know it all. So it is difficult for me to share anything new. But let me say this. Do you guys remember anything from last Sunday's sermon? Some of you may remember me saying how Vincent Van Gogh used to be a pastor or a preacher, right? Because that's something new. Generally speaking, most of us, people, forget data. But it is not the data that transforms people. It is the Word of God that transforms people. So that hopefully, I pray that you hear God's message instead of a mine. In the late 1800s through the early 1900s, alcoholism in America, as well as in the church, was a big issue. A newspaper from May 12, 1917, states that some boys were getting drunk by church wine 
and throwing bottles. As the issues of alcoholism was rising, also the cases of domestic violence increased as well. Many faithful women, including Methodist women, worked tirelessly to do something about this. And as you guys know, once in America, we had something called prohibition. Many American women, including Methodist women, celebrated. However, during that time, many churches in our country had one concern, communion. You guys may call it Eucharist, Lord's Supper, communion. Because unlike nowadays, back then, many churches used only real wine for the communion. So churches were struggling to find a solution to celebrate the communion during the times of prohibition. There was a British American dentist, Methodist, later became a minister, named Dr. Thomas Bramwell Welch. He wanted his church to be able to celebrate the communion without alcohol or without wine. So he invented something called Dr. Welch's unfermented wine. Later, this became, as you and I, we know, no, I don't have it, Welch's grape juice which many churches nowadays around the world, including here at Warsaw United Methodist Church, use Welch's grape juice to celebrate the communion. Our God used, and our God still uses, whatever material, whether it's a Welch's grape juice or a Welch's, Dr. Welch's unfermented wine for his ministry. There was a time that I took a course in a seminary and the professor, professor ended the entire semester, entire class with a communion. And he said that, don't worry about your grade, maybe you will pass, but remember, you are learning the essence of Jesus Christ. That was a wonderful teaching. So from that point on, every church that I serve, every time I do church council meetings, we do communion. I remember doing my very first communion with the church, church council, at my previous church, the Brenner Mill Church. The person who was going to buy the bread for me forgot to buy the bread. He said, we have some frozen hot dog buns in the refrigerator. He said, just to put those frozen hot dog buns in the microwave for three minutes. It'll be all fine. So I listened. I took those frozen hot dog buns and I put it in the microwave and cooked it for three minutes. It smelled really, really nice. And council meeting went just fine. And at the end of the council meeting, I was ready to do the communion. And I said, I start saying the words of institution. And I said, on the night of Jesus' rest, I uncovered the bread. And people start laughing because it was a hot dog bun. But I try to keep my straight face. And I kept saying, on the night of Jesus' rest, he took the bread and gave thanks to you. And people saw the hot dog bread, hot dog buns. So they start cracking up and laughing. And I kept going by saying, he gave thanks, broke it. And as I was trying to break this hot dog bun that has been cooked in microwave for three minutes, it start crumbling. It was going everywhere. My beloved council members start laughing and laughing. And that's how I did my very first communion with the council at the Brandenville Church. And I'll always remember that when we used hot dog buns for the communion at the Brandenville Church. In Greek, those bread. In Greek term is artos. Artos, if I translate that literally, it's more of a chunk of a flour. 
It is not the chunk of a flour that is important. It is not the pita bread that we may use that is important. It is not the, so to speak, frozen hot dog bun that is important. When God is using for his ministry, his purpose, for his kingdom of God, God can use anything. Last Sunday here at Warsaw United Methodist Church, I had my very first council meeting. So as you guys would have imagined, at the end of our council meeting, yes, we did our communion. And I used a cup from Haiti. I bought it from Haiti when I went to Haiti medical mission trip two years ago. And I also used a Chinese rice cake basket to contain the bread. To be honest with you, I was told that that basket uh, was uh, from China and that's for containing Chinese rice cake. But I bought it from the MFA, Richmond, Virginia. And I used the cloth from Stratford Hills, UMC, to cover the elements. And sadly, Stratford Hill, UMC, does not exist anymore. I was their last pastor of a Stratford Hill, UMC. Why am I telling you guys all these stories of a Welch's grape juice, hot dog buns, and different materials that host or contain the elements for the communion? If I go back to our scripture, it says there were six stone jars for purification rite purpose. You guys may imagine this picture as you guys see. Purification rite, if I simplify it, those jars were just sitting by the entrance or the exit so that the guests or people who come in and out of the party could wash their hands and feet. Those stone jars were not just a little dinky thing, but rather those stone jars actually looked like, looked like these. They were very large. How large? They were very large. Those of you at home, you guys see those pictures. People could simply put their hands in the jar and wash their hands in it or draw some water from this big jar and splash their feet. Meaning, water in the jars, as people kept using it, probably got dirty. All right? Jesus does not say, empty the jars, but rather he says, fill the jars to the brim. I repeat, Jesus does not say, empty the jars, but rather Jesus says, fill the jar to the brim. So I faithfully imagine those six jars with some dirty water. Then by the words of Jesus Christ, servants, people, added some new water. Then it became wine. It became something new. It became something that was for the wedding. It became something that was for the ministry of Jesus Christ. It became something that rejuvenated the entire atmosphere. I can see and I can read the jars in this story as the people of God, metaphorically. We are being used for the ministry of God. We still have voluntarily or involuntarily some dirt dirtiness, errors, shortcomings, and limitations, just like there were dirty waters in the jars. But with little bit of the essence of Jesus Christ, at his hour, with his commands, his words, by his way, just like dirty water, receiving a little bit of a Jesus Christ and became wine, we can be transformed into something that is reviving the ministry of a God, even with our own shortcomings and limitations. So for me, the gospel, the good news, the good news from this story is that even with our own errors, our own shortcomings, with our own limitations and context, 
when God is using us for His purpose, with the help and the essence of a Jesus Christ, or simply with a little bit of a Jesus, we can be used to serve the kingdom of God wonderfully. Then it is not about the unfermented wine. It is not about the grape juice. It is not about the hot dog buns. It is not about what contains those elements. God used them all for His purposes. Then God transforms all of us by the Spirit. God can and God uses all of us for His glory even with our own limitations. Amen? Dear my beloved disciples of a Warsaw United Methodist Church, I understand that the Apostle Paul talks about cleansing ourselves, purifying ourselves, emptying ourselves to receive, to fill ourselves with the Spirit of the living God. I understand that. And yes, rightfully so, we ought to be disciplined and go through the journey of a perfection as John Wesley would say, or we ought to be simply civilized. I understand it. But in my humble perspective, we still will come up short. We still will come up short. Thus, we are in need of a Jesus filling us, transforming us by his word, by his spirit, by his grace. May all of us receive that good news of a Jesus Christ. May all of us have confidence in our God who still works through us and through our Warsaw United Methodist Church, even in this challenging time. May all of us be filled with the Christ and be blessings to others this week. So we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for many blessings that you bestowed upon us, our church, our family, and our nation. Oh God, as a faith community, we are blessed to have Miss Brooke Bowles and Charlie the Fifth officially joining us as a part of us. Help our faith journey together be pleasing to you. Bless Miss Laura Brooke and Charlie Bowles the Fifth as they continue to go through their daily lives as well as their faith journey. We are going through a challenging time as a nation. There are people, even our own disciples, their lives were impacted by this COVID-19 virus pandemic. Oh God, watch over us. And keep every health care workers and their families physically as well as emotionally. Oh God, there are many of our beloved disciples who are neglected, challenged, hurt physically, spiritually, financially, even emotionally. Abba Father, you sent Jesus Christ to restore your relationship with the humankind. Oh God, help us extend the ministry of Jesus Christ to our beloved ones. There are some of us who have prayer requests. Be with Mr. and Mrs. Billings, Natalia Brunig, who is going through some tough time. Heal her, be with her family members. Mrs. Connie Gallagher, Mr. Joshua Garrett, Sandy Newsom, Bill and Francis Clements, family of Don Jewell, and our beloved council chair, and also a lay leader. Oh God, be with Mr. Herbert, and be with Mr. Mihalko, be with Kevin Keane, Suzanne Kelly, Tricia Speakman, Glenda Larva, 
Adele Trevino, Mandy and Trevor Townsend, family of William Dalton, Michelle Gent, Tani Elderman, Oh God, especially be with Miss Doris Broderson and Virginia D. Loach as they are going into surgery tomorrow. Be with their physicians and surgeons and our doctors and everyone involved in their care through their efforts and through their talents. Let Miss Broderson and Virginia recover and lift up your name. Also be with the leaders of our nation, state, and city. It is a difficult time, challenging time, for many different reasons. Also be with members of our church council as we continue to navigate through as a church in this time, as we continue to discern your will for us. All of us have our own prayer requests in our hearts, cries in our minds. God of all creation, you know us. Hear our cries. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. At this point in our worship, we respond to God's great works and God's great gifts as a church in our life together by sharing what we have been given in response to the love of God. We thank you for your faithful giving through the mail and online as we continue during these challenging times. Chris is going to post a link to our church's PayPal. And if you click the link, it'll take you there, and you can digitally give to our church, just as though you were giving here at church. And if you're not able, or if you prefer to give at a, another time, then please feel free to use this moment for prayer and reflection as Miss Nedra plays for us. If you could join me and Libby and us here in prayer. You ready? Eternal God, please bless these gifts we offer. We know that it is not just what goes in the plates, but we offer our prayers, our time, our talents, our resources, and our praise to you in response to the great blessings we have received through the life and love of Jesus Christ. May these gifts be used to share that love with others. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Three ninety nine. All right, so our final hymn of the day. It's going to be found in our United Methodist hymnals. It's going to be number 399. Take my life and let it be. And feel free to sing aloud at home. Or if you'd like, you can follow along as the words will be displayed on our screen.
faith community, we reach back into the past to honor those who came before us and those who have given so much so that we may be here today. And we reach forward with hands of a welcome to embrace Miss Brooke Bowles and Charles Bowles V, who have nearly joined your kingdom through our Warsaw United Methodist Church family. Dear my beloved ones, let's have confidence in our God who uses all of us, even with our own limitations and shortcomings, for His ministry and for His glory. As you guys go, know that you are not going or you are not going through this faith journey alone, but the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.